when Steamboat Geyser in Yellowstone National Park, which spouts air higher than any active geyser in the world, resurfaced in 2025 after three and a half years of inactivity. Some speculated that it signaled the possibility of an explosive volcanic eruption in the surrounding geyser basin. These hydrothermal eruptions can eject mud, sand, and rock into the air and release life-threatening hot steam. A similar eruption on White Island, New Zealand, in December 2019 killed 22 people. A new study by geoscientists who study geysers refutes that idea, finding little indication of underground magma movement that would trigger an eruption. The geysers lie just outside the country's largest and most dynamic volcanic caldera, but haven't experienced a major eruption in 70,000 years. Hydrothermal eruptions, essentially, hot air exploding upon contact with hot rock, are one of the biggest hazards in Yellowstone, said Michael Manga, a professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of California, Berkeley, and the study's lead author. The reason these eruptions are problematic is that they are very difficult to predict. It's not clear if there are any precursors that would allow us to give warning. He and I found that although the ground around the geyser rose and seismic activity increased slightly before the geyser reactivated, and the area is currently emitting slightly more heat into the atmosphere, no other dormant geysers in the basin have reactivated. Surface air temperatures that triggered the steamboat eruptions also did not increase, and none of the steamboat eruptions, except the one that started in 2018, have occurred after periods of high seismic activity. Manga, who has studied geysers around the world and created several in his own laboratory, and his colleagues addressed three key questions about Steamboat Geyser. Why does it erupt? Why does its period vary so much, ranging from three to 17 days? And why does it erupt so high? The team found answers to both questions. By comparing the column heights, of 11 different geysers in the United States, Russia, Iceland, and Chile, with the estimated depth of the air reservoirs from which they erupted, they found that the deeper the reservoir, the higher the eruptions. Steamboat Geyser, with a reservoir about 25 meters, 82 feet underground, had the highest columns up to 115 meters, or 377 feet while the two geysers Manga measured in Chile were among the lowest erupting about one meter three feet from reservoirs two and five meters underground, respectively. Essentially, what you do is fill the reservoir, reach a critical point, empty it, and then drain the fluid to release it until it refills, he said. The deeper you go, the higher the pressure. The higher the pressure, the higher the boiling point. And the hotter the water, the more energy it has, and the higher the geyser. To explore the reasons for Steamboat Geyser's variability, the team compiled records of 109 eruptions since its reactivation in 2018. These records included weather and river flow data, seismometer readings and ground rotation, and observations by geyser enthusiasts, https colon slash slash geysertimes.org slash geyser.php, ID equals steamboat. The researchers also looked at past active and dormant periods of steamboat in nine other Yellowstone geysers, as well as ground surface thermal emission data from Norris Geyser Basin. They concluded that variations in rainfall and snowmelt likely account for some of the variability in these periods, and possibly other geysers as well. In the spring and early summer, with snowmelt and rain, groundwater pressure pushes more water into the underground reservoir, resulting in more frequent hot spring eruptions. During the winter, with less air, the lower groundwater pressure fills the reservoir more slowly, 
leading to longer periods of spaced eruptions. Because the air pushed into the reservoir comes from deep within the reservoir, it ages for decades or even centuries before returning to the surface, he said.